The older I get, the more I hate sermons just like this one. I'm going to give you a chance to call your name. If you don't call your name, you ain't get nothing. But I'm going to give you an opportunity to release your name and then put a praise behind your name. When I count to three, say your name. One, two, three. John Hanna. <laughs> but let's talk about it here on All Things Theology. Kill my theme music. All Things Theology. All things theology, we chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta get that theology to God, hollow because this is how we do it at All Things Theology. Yo, grace and peace. Welcome back to another episode of All Things Theology, where this is your host, K Dub. Today, we're gonna be talking about John Hanna. Um, someone sent me this sermon. I, I, I'm going to expose them because this sermon is going to give you a headache. So I'm going to expose them. Send all the hate mail to him. <laughs> it is Pastor Trey Dabney up in Virginia. Shout out to my bro. Uh, but I mean, he told me to listen to this sermon after I did a sermon review and he said it's worse. And I don't think he's wrong. You know, if, just a little context. I did a sermon review of John Hanna at T.D. Jake's church and it was about <laughs> take it out of the trash. It's so it was a bad sermon. Bad sermon. Well, this has a lot more of everything in it. It has a lot of mess. It has literally a lot of mess. It's, it's, I don't appreciate you, bro. I do not appreciate you, you know? Jingle bells, jingle bells. I'm not going to hell. You know what I'm saying? But let's get into it. I honor the Lord for being here on tonight and I'm grateful that my steps have been ordered by the Lord I don't know about you but I don't have time just to be going places just to go places but I need to be in the right place at the right time and I need to be around the right people and I'm so glad that he ordered us here on tonight I honor the Lord for the men of God the shepherd the overseer, the angel of the house. Can we celebrate the right Reverend Pastor Dr. Jamal Bryant? I boy, no honor way, you. Boy, ain't no way, boy. I Don't honor know. you. I now, this is literally how the sermon started. It was literally a praise of the angel of the house. Put an angel in the chat right now if you're watching this. I've literally never heard someone be called that before. And... <laughs> He's just taking it in. By the way, this sermon was in Jamal Bryant's church. This was done in his church. Um, yeah. Uh, you want to let me know you're not of God? <laughs> Preach at Jamal Bryant's church, you know. <laughs> um, how dare you? Honor you. Um, it's so amazing that we are here. My church is 15 years old. And in the first year of me pastoring, out of 15 years, I've only been out of my pulpit three times on a Sunday. Um, I call myself a stay-at-home parent. Um, but in the first year, the Lord told me, I need you to leave your church and go to Baltimore. And he says, I need you to go because I'm going to show you your journey. And when I went to you, you were in your church. You had went from a party room to a school and from a school to a church and I was in a party room. And the Lord told me that you would lay hands on me because you had the oil to defeat what I was about to come up against. Well, he can't defeat heresy because he's in heresy himself. So, but the Lord didn't tell you none of that. The Lord, and this sermon did not age well. By the way, it's, it's, this is uh, four years ago. This sermon has not aged well at all because Brian has been in some mess theologically and practically since this sermon and, and from from what i can tell of this sermon i think he was in some mess around this time and this sermon is about essentially restoring um dr brian back into the pastoral office so who knows what he did around there i didn't care to go google to find out but god didn't tell you this man god did not tell you this and you laid hands on me and we both fell out in that pulpit. <laughs> and I say to you that the oil worked. I went from a party room. He must have changed your car because he ain't got that oil. He ain't got that oil on him. 
I'm tired of the church. To a school, to a church. But notice he thinks the oil worked because his church got bigger. But again, we're going to let him finish this out. The exact steps that you took. And that was 15 years ago that we've been together and that I met my biological parents, your mother and father, <laughs> who dropped me off at the temple and left me like they did Samuel. <laughs> but I found my parents, Akuna Matana. <laughs> what? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Uh, something wrong with this man but anyways we're not gonna make a point about that let's get into the actual sermon text uh first samuel 17 if you have your bibles open of course you're david all this nonsense let's go if you have your bibles let's go in first samuel 17 and 46 it says this day the lord will deliver you into my hands and i will strike you down and cut off your head this very day I will give the caucuses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals and the whole world nudge your neighbor say you're international how, how did he get that already so so the whole world being known that there's a God in Israel is actually about how you're going to be known you see how the, the, again when you don't care about the text this text is just being used as a prop to preach what he already wants. Say it with me in the chat. Perspectivalism. Put put a hundred in the chat. Put perspectivalism in the chat because you already know what's about to happen. I hope you got your passport. Listen, <laughs> the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Here's the line I want you to get in verse 47. All those gathered here, looking, come on here, will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord says, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. I need you to touch your neighbor and say, you're going to have a public victory. <laughs> Yeah, this text isn't about any of what he's about to preach in this sermon. This I'm not I'm not even able to put all the madness in the sermon. That's how bad it was. It was like an hour and a half of literally madness, stuff like that. Let me give a kind of exegetical framework where I believe David essentially is about. First and foremost, we have to understand this text is about Jesus. Typologically, Jesus is the greater David and he wins on our behalf he he our victory is in him so in one sense you can say this passage is about us if you understand that you know primarily it's about christ what i mean by that is you're not david ultimately christ is <laughs> right and us being in him you know you can say there's some parallel okay but first and foremost let's let's preach christ but many people want to go to David and say, see, be like David. So ultimately, my, my fear when people preach like that is they ultimately turn the Old Testament into a book of just moral, moral, do thou likewise passages. When that's not the that's not the point of the Old Testament. The point is to point you, <laughs> pardon the pun, the point is to point you to Christ, right? But no, we're not going to get any of that. Y yeah, you're not going to get pointed to Christ. It's going to get pointed to you like this. Here is the first king of Israel who is wounded on a battlefield. And what does he do? He encourages his armor bearer to take his sword and to kill him. His armor bearer does not kill him. But the first anointed king of Israel gets his sword and falls on it. Um, I think by this point he's moved to Saul, so he's not talking about David, just, just to be clear. Uh, he's talking about Saul. Can you be anointed and still struggle with depression? Can you be anointed and still have thoughts? Here we see that the first king of Israel, who is a leader, falls on his sword and commits... 
And now let's stop right there. For every leader, I need you to be careful with every decision that you make. Because every decision that you make, there's somebody going to follow your lead. The Bible then says that his armor bearer took his sword and did the same. Which means that somebody is watching every move that you make. When you want to be a leader, when you step on the stage, your life don't belong to you no more. Y'all ain't going to say that. You want the spotlight. You want the attention. This passage ain't about depression. It, it ain't about or, or even Saul killing him. It, 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 it ain't about any of that. I mean, I mean, what would generally happen to the Paul Barrow if he lived? He would be killed, too, by his enemy. So the Paul Barrow is like, hey, I'd rather take my life than um, have, be, have it be killed by my enemies. This has nothing to do with <laughs> he's just following the lead of of the king, per se. Because he has, you know, uh, he wants to delete himself or something like that. I mean, th this is strange stuff. But you don't want the pressure. Mm. Can we talk for a minute? The Bible no. lets us know that before Saul commits suicide, that God had already raised up the next. If you don't mind, do me a favor. Can you touch your neighbor and say, you're next. No, you're no, next. No, no. Come on. No, I don't want to turn to you and say anything. Where's my sound effect? I got a new sound effect for this, you know. Unfollow, oh, wait. Oh. unfollow me. <laughs> That's fitting too, but that isn't it. Hold on, let me, let me, let me look. Is this it? Get your hands off me! Yeah, get your hands off me. Don't be touching me during the service. <laughs> Touch him again and say, you're next, you're next. Don't you get you're your hands next. off. Me. You're next. You're not going to have to kiss anybody behind or do anything like that. You're not going to have to run behind nobody. It's called favor on your life. Can we just talk for a minute? I need you to come over here. Some of y'all, you've been feeling like God was going to do something amazing. So God sent you to this conference to let you know that in the last quarter of this year, hear me clearly, 2020 is about to go down for you. Oh my God, you about to take... <laughs> you know what's so funny? COVID hit after this. <laughs> this man sent us into a pandemic. <laughs> Cough like a rocket. I came to get you ready to give you revelation of why you've been going through what you've been going through. So on December the 31st, oh you're going to go into New Year's Eve like. <laughs> Test two people around you and tell them you're next, you're next, you're next, you're next. You're next. If, if they're next, they shouldn't want it. Oh, my goodness. This sermon is literally all about you. Don't worry. He's got more. So the Bible says, let's go Bible if you don't mind. The Bible. Bible says <laughs> that God literally speaks to Samuel and said, I have already, listen carefully, chosen who's going to be next, although the seat is already occupied. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Although the seat is already occupied, let them have the seat while I give you the oil. Can we talk for a minute? The Bible says, he tells Samuel, I need you to go to a man's house by the name of Jesse. The next king is in his house. Please listen. When we go into his house, we get the opportunity to see how David has been suffering privately. Let's talk for a minute. Because many of you all have been going through some things behind closed doors doors and we've been again you see all the parallel everything he can think think of in the passage about david it's ultimately about you i mean he, he makes no references to christ and, you know christ is the greater david and, and skip all that nonsense how am i going to get them riled up so they can give offering oh don't worry we're going to get to that we're going to get to that offering i got bread in my pocket You know we got to get to that offering. Let me rile you up first off for this cake and candy. Don't worry. We're going to get to that offering. Talk what goes on in the house, stay in the house. We don't tell our business outside. But you know what you've been having to address. The Bible says, come on, y'all, let's go Bible. That literally Samuel goes to the house and tells Jesse, get your boys in line. The 
Bible says, listen carefully, he consecrated them. Please listen. He consecrated them and then he invited them to the sacrifice. But the thing is, he only brought in seven when he got eight. Can we talk for a minute? Everybody was invited but David. Can we talk? The Bible says that they walked in and the first one to walk in was Eliab. He was all swole. He looked like he was going to be the next king. But oh, God say, ho, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh. Don't look at the outward appearance. Because it's a lot of people that look like they got the oil, but don't have the oil. It's a lot of people that look like they run it, but they ain't running nothing. He say, don't look at the outward appearance. Because man look at the outward appearance, but I can see what's going on in the heart. Ah, y'all, please do me a favor. Test two people next to you say, you're next, you're next, you're next, you're next. You next, you next, you next. Sir, what did I tell you? Get your hands off me! Don't you touch me. He says, watch me, watch me. He says, is there another? He said, oh, shoot. I left him in the field because he's the youngest and I didn't think that God would skip over seven just to get to one. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. It's some people that's been on the job longer than you, but God's about to step over all of them just to get to you. My it's some people that's been a member of this church longer than you, but God's about to step over all. No, 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 no. I ain't scared of y'all. I'm going back to Chicago. Look at here. Come on here. Touch your neighbor. Say, you're next. You're next. You're next. Get your hands off me. Don't you touch me. That literally has nothing to do with the passage. It ain't about your job. It ain't about none of that. It has nothing to do with this. This actually shows the preeminence of the firstborn. Even though he was the last born, right? He's the youngest. He is the firstborn, the preeminent one. You know, that's that would be a great pastor to preach on to display that. But <laughs> right, he's trying to find all these parallels about you. This man bringing up their job at McDonald's. Man, this guy got nothing to do with you. Now, let me give you a revelation. Have a seat, have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. So this is private suffering. So how do you think that David feels that everybody gets called in, but you don't get called? And many of you all in the building, you have had to struggle with the spirit of rejection. You have had to struggle with the spirit that you felt like you were abandoned. You've had to struggle with the feeling that you don't feel like if you have enough. And they made you second guess yourself. Who knew this was a passage about mental health? Literally got nothing to do with it. Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me. And it's one thing for it to happen outside your house, but it's another thing for it to go in it in your house. And there are many of you all in the building. It's your family that tried to jack you up. Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me. It's your family that don't like you. It's your brothers and your sisters that have an issue with you. And you wonder why they have an issue? Let me explain, boo. Let me give you revelation about your life. Because they thought that when you got left in the field, that you would have given in to the rejection. They thought that you would have given in to the abandonment. But oh, when they called your name, please hear this. The Bible says that Samuel said, we will not sit down until he comes. For some of y'all, the breakthrough won't happen until you get there. The healing won't happen until you get there. The takeoff won't happen until you get there. Now watch me. The Bible says, watch me, they sent for David. Now let me give you revelation. Some of y'all wonder why you can't walk with the crew. God literally has you walking by yourself. Because when you enter in, he want to make sure that nobody is associated with what he's about to do for you. This is perspectivalism on steroids, <laughs> maybe meth methamphetamines. But again, notice any, any little small thing in the text, he's trying to find some parallel about you. I mean, kudos for him re remembering this passage, but he's remembered this passage so that he can point them to themselves. So David being alone, see, that's about you being alone. God's preparing you right now. Oh, they sent for David. See, God's going to send somebody for you when it's your time. Every, everything. You being the, uh, the last one called. See, God's going to skip over some people. It's like all this is about you. None of this is actually in the text. This is this is a historical narrative of what happened. But like I said false teachers love historical narratives and kind of making them some typology about you. 
Nobody's going to get the credit for what he's about to do. Are you ready? You suffered in the house privately, but he's about to anoint you in front of everybody in your section. I need you to hear what I'm about to say to you. I need you to pay attention. Those of you that have gone through any form of rejection or abandonment or feeling as if you are less than, can I see you lift your hands and worship your, worship your God for five seconds right there? Five, four, three, two, one. Um, how dare you? He loves the scream, man. He, this guy loves the scream, Michael Jackson style. But don't don't worry, he got some more mess he coming up with. He talking to a few of you. Oh, watch me, please listen, please listen. And the Bible said, and he began to pour. And watch me. You can have the position. I need the oil. You can have the money. I need the oil. You can have the title. I need the oil. I wish you would sit next to some oily people next to you because if I got. I was thinking of another word, greasy. They ain't oily, they greasy people up in there. They want the, oil. They want the greasy. But this man's everywhere in this sermon. This, this sermon got no thesis, no plot, no centerpiece. This sermon everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Oil and you got oil. We should be having an oil gathering. Listen, many people got positions, but they ain't got no oil. And the Bible said, and he began to pour. I need you to make sure you sit in a greasy section. <laughs> I need you to make sure. I knew it was greasy. I knew it is greasy. Fat me greasy. You sit next to somebody that the oil is on their life. High five somebody and tell them you're it. Yeah. Can you do me a favor? Please do what I tell you to do. I need you to high five. Two people tell them you're it. You're it. When I touch you, there should be a splash. These boys play a tag in church. Talk about you're it. Come on, man. When I touch you, there should be a quickening in our spirit. You're it to change your family. You're it to change your city. You're it to change your circle. You're it to break generational curses. Please, y'all, obey me in this. Tell somebody, you suffered prior. Privately, but you're gonna be anointed in this building. Touch him again and say, You're it. You're it. You're it. You're it. You're it. You're it. Yeah, notice how it depends all upon you. You gotta be the one to bring the change. You gotta do this in your. You, 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 you. <laughs> He's a great singer, right? It's all on you. My goodness, the pressure that is on you. But don't worry. This man listens to Beyonce because he wants you to say your name now. While you're in this building, you're about to release your name. When you release your name in the spirit realm, God's about to take your name and drop it off in the right area that you've been practicing in. When your phone ring, I need you to show up like you're ready to do what you've been called to do. I'm going to give you a chance to call your name. If you don't call your name, you ain't getting nothing. But I'm going to give you an opportunity to release your name. And then Hold on a second. I know what that was. Yes, right. I'm thinking that's some type of arsonist. And put a praise behind your name. When I count to three, say your name. One, two, three. John Hanna. Hold on, y'all. On the count of three, put Christ's name in the chat. One, two, three. <laughs> put Jesus Christ's name in the chat. Bro, we don't need to know about your name. God ain't because you put your name in the atmosphere. God's going to put your name and then put it in the right place. What, what does this have to do with anything? We trust in the providence of God. No, this is this is nonsense. Nonsense. Like I said, this man. Where is he at in the Bible? What, what, what happened to David and Goliath? You know. Amen. I need you to make sure you sit next to somebody who gonna call their name. One, two, three, say your name again. Sean Hanna. Out of life. Out of life. Hey, Messiah. Rotore me on that. Test three people to ring and tell them you're next, you're next. Your phone is gonna ring. Be careful, because you might be next. The question is, what for? <laughs> right? You don't want to be the next to lose your job, right? To drop some food off. And when he gets there, there's a champion named Goliath that steps down in the valley. That's been coming down for 40 days, twice a day. But everybody keep running. But won't nobody address it. Touch your neighbor and say, you're it. 
you a slayer. Come on here. So notice, we, we, we're, again, we've all been seeing the parallel between David. Now we're the giant slayer. We're, we're the one defeating our enemies. I mean, I mean, what a great passage to, to preach Christ. I mean, he's the one that defeats some enemies on our behalf. We're the fearful Israelites on the sideline while David, i.e. The, the, you know, the typological Christ fights on our behalf, right? We don't fight. <laughs> My goodness, what a great parallel passage. But no, you're the giant slayer. I need you to speak this, y'all. Please do what I tell you to do. I need you to obey me. Touch your neighbor. Say, you're it. You got this. You got this. No, 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 no. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, he wants us to obey him. No, sir. We're going to obey God. That's who we want to obey. Not you, Mr. John Hanna. But don't worry, it's all eyes on you. You, you like Beyonce, now you like Tupac. Hey everybody, just pay close attention, I'm almost done. So he ends up, now all eyes on him. Mr. Tupac. And I asked God, why did you give me this word? For new birth. And for Pastor Jamal. Because all eyes are on you. Bro, that one God, man. Don't say that. <laughs> um, how dare you? You know, it's going to get funky in here because I'm going to use a bunch of adjectives. That one God. Speak, I'm tired of your church. That one God, man. That was Tupac, bro. Bro was listening to Tupac on the way to church. New birth Look at Jamal Bryant. Pastor Jamal. <laughs> All I Why is he talking like that? On you. You have a huge audience waiting to see what's about to go down. And he told me everything you've gone through has prepared you for now. So how do you win? You ready? Yeah, yeah let's hear this. You can only win by continual, by continuing to be original. So you win whatever that's supposed to mean, I'm assuming your victories, David and Goliath, by being yourself? <laughs> no, sir. No, 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 no. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Turn off the lights. Sir, you are the problem. When I say you, collectively you, we are the problem. You don't need to be original. <laughs> sir, you don't need to be original. The original you is dead in sin. You got that original sin, you know? You need to be cleaned. The ideas that God give you, nobody else have them. That's your sling and your stone. So now the sling and the stone have taken on some kind of meaning about being original. What? I mean, what won't this man make a parallel to find you in the text about, right? Come on, man. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. So if anybody say to you, that's not the way that we've been doing it. What in the Wizard of that's Oz? That's them trying to put Saul's armor on you <laughs> to handicap you in a slow way. Boy, ain't no way, boy. From what boy, ain't God no way, is boy. calling you to do. What is, hold on, wait, we gotta go back. What, what just happened? What literally did this happen? I want you to look at this man. No way a grown man, a pastor... <laughs> No man, no way. Look at this. Somebody look at this. What is going on? This is somebody pastor, yo. Seriously. No, 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 no. What? Unfollow me. Jingle bells, jingle bells. I'm not going to hell. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I got a new sound effect. For these pastors that's always preaching heresy in their sermons. Y'all ready for this one? If you ready for this one, 
If you put a fire in the chat, put a fire emoji in the chat. Cause John Hanna, I made this, I made this sound effect for for pastors like sound for like uh, John Hanna. Yeah, yeah, I made this sound effect. Put a fire emoji in the chat. Y'all ready for this one? Unleashing a debut sound effect. Like a bad sermon, heresy's there. <laughs> Cause he's being a bad neighbor right now by preaching this madness. Yeah, yeah, like a bad sermon. Heresy's there. Like a bad sermon. Heresy's there. Had to, so nice, had to play it twice. That's them trying to put Saul's armor on you to handicap you and to slow you down from what God is calling you to do. So this is why you have to take off the past. So the slingshot represents you being original. Saul's armor represents the past. <laughs> I mean, where did he get this? Where? That's how we won then, but this is how we going to win. Interesting, sir. Interesting. But he, he, we, we, ain't, we ain't done with the mess. We ain't done with the mess. Everybody listen, please. You can't run. Can't run. I ain't breathing heavy. Because you have opposition. The Bible says and David ran towards. Which means that we don't run to another church. We don't run to what's comfortable. Yeah, he's he's really telling these people. Yeah, I know there's a lot of controversy around Dr. Jamal Bryant, but we don't run like David. <laughs> we don't run to what's comfortable, like you know. Uh, madness. No, if your church is preaching heresy, your pastors and adultery and all that. Yeah, 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 you, yeah, you better run up out of there. You better run like your life dependent upon it. You need to say this. I'm tired of your church. Turn off the lights. You need to get up out of there if your pastor is preaching heresy. We face opposition because we got the oil to deal with it. I need you to make sure you stand next to a greasy person. Please make sure you stand it to a greasy person. Oh, they are. They are, especially if Jamal Bryant's next to them. They be real greasy. Reach over, grab it, even by the hand and just squeeze it. Just say, that's oil, that's oil. Come on, squeeze that hand, say, that's oil. That's oil, that's oil, that's oil, that's oil. You better hope that's, that's oil. oil. That's oil, that's oil, that's oil. That's why you've been under pressure because the pressure produced oil. I need you to squeeze that hand again. That's why your kids been acting a fool. That's why the devil been messing with your body. No, your kids acting a fool probably because you ain't disciplining them. The devil messing with your body because you like too many Debbie snack cakes. Don't, uh, don't blame this on, on you having the oil. You sound like you uh, neglecting something. Squeeze that hand and say, that's oil, that's oil, that's oil, that's oil for your public victory. He did not bring you this far. What a mess. What a mess of a sermon, man. <laughs> Hold that hand. Hold that hand. Oh, that and I'm not just talking to Pastor Jamal either. There's, there's some other pastors in this building that you're in this city that all eyes are on Atlanta. Yes, all eyes are on Atlanta. As we have been saying, Atlanta must be stopped, or as I like to say, as I like to say, A.T. Hell, because it is a madness of false doctrine in Atlanta. Because there's been so much negativity out of this city that God is ready for his glory to be revealed. I need you to hear what I'm about to say to you. And I know my time is almost a please listen. For everyone that is here, you have the anointing to deal with the spirits of the city. Please hear me. The Bible said when the demons, when the man came running out, the only time that Jesus had a conversation with a demon and the demon said, please, can you make us go into the pigs? 
And Jesus gave the pigs, gave the demons permission to go into the pigs. He said, well, before, before you put us in there, can you not make us leave this region? Can we stay in this city? And for everybody, Pastor Jamal, you've been sent here because you got the oil to deal with the spirits of this region. Everything you... How did he get that? Like, literally, how do you get that interpretation? Oh, my goodness. So, so Jamal Bryant is Jesus in the passage dealing with the demonic people. Oh, my God. I, I don't even know how to begin to deal with this. Went through squeezed oil. Anybody else would have left church. Anybody else would have put the gospel down. But instead of you putting it down, you grabbed it close. Yeah, anybody else with integrity would have stepped down out of that pulpit, but not Jamal Bryant. No, 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 no. Qualifications of an elder? Nah. Anybody else, yeah, would have would have done the right thing. Why? Because oil has been produced in everything. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Squeeze that hand and say, that's oil. That's oil for a public victory. For a public victory. What a mess. What a mess. Don't worry. We got some more. Don't worry. We got to put some more. Put a hundred in the chat because you know we got some more. So the Bible says that David ran towards Goliath. He reached his hand into his sling. He pulled it out. He placed it in the sling. He has to whine. You cannot aim and run and whine at the same time. All you can do is release. And the Lord said, I'm about to put a shout in your belly. And when you release this shout in the praise, when you release this shout, hold that hand and say, don't you let me go until something is slain. Don't you let me go until we feel a breakthrough. I feel a travail about to come in this building. I got some senior pastors in the building. All ministers and preachers and teachers, can you meet me on the altar? Because there's some things that's been attacking you in the spirit realm, and God's about to destroy some things for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Something about to get destroyed. Lord willing, I was hoping that microphone, but what is going on here? I want you guys to answer me this question. Look what, look at this. This is literally about to be a madhouse. I can't explain it, but the Lord said, I need you to take this scripture and I need you to release this at new birth. He said, the glory of this present house. Now notice, he, said, he started off saying he can't explain it, but the Lord told him to release this, <laughs> this verse that he, he doesn't understand. The Lord didn't give you the meaning. He, anyways. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house. Stop. Now, some people get offended. What do you mean? We got to have glory. Stop. We gave you an accolade. You did have glory. It was called the former glory. You had it. Nobody can deny what was going on in this city. Nobody can deny. You had it. So, some, somehow, the, the passage he's quoted is in Haggai uh, 2 9. Some. some Apparently, this has to do with Jamal Bryant's church in Atlanta. <laughs> it's what Haggai is talking about. <laughs> has nothing to do with um, Haggai. Oh, my goodness. I mean, the fact that this guy, I mean, what won't he apply? I mean, I'm surprised he ain't said, holy, holy, holy is Jamal Bryant. I, I mean, at this point, he might as well. He's, he's abusing all these passages. But what do you say to a guy to say, but now I want to do a new thing. Oh, oh, he want to do a new thing, huh? Oh, I got a sound effect for that. You know, he's doing it. Who's doing it? God is doing a new thing. You know, he's doing it. Yo, who's, who's doing, doing it? God is doing a new thing. Go on and put it. Go on and put new thing in the chat. Yeah, yeah. False preachers love that pass. It's about a new thing because they always think it got something to do with them, right? Do you keep holding the former against the present? And some of you have been rebellious. Oh, yeah. And I hear the Lord saying, repent. I hear the Lord say, the mission is before you. And if some of you all don't repent, you won't live long. Because God's going to prove he's God through your death. Oh, 
but the glory a fresh glory is about to be released squeeze that hand and say that's glory hold that hand and on the count of three we gonna call down the present glory so no this man thinks he's about to call out the glory of heaven now praise god for the patience of god right god is patient he's merciful right these men think they can actually call down the glory from heaven i mean be be glad that the lord didn't send right rocks from heaven or you know thunder from heaven new strategies for your business so the glory of heaven is financial no notice notice all this madness this is what the glory of heaven is new outreaches that you've never even thought about people move in here just to be a part of the move of god squeeze that hand Close your eyes. Don't you play with me. Don't you let me go until we get a breakthrough. We need the present glory to fill this building. Every preacher, you need fresh revelation. You need fresh dreams. You need fresh, fresh members. You need fresh financial situations. You need fresh prophets and apostles. You need the fresh gifts to flow in your house. I need you to squeeze that hand. And on the count of three, we're going to shout glory. Don't you let me go Watch until this. we get a breakthrough. Watch One. this. He Batando Rosa Two Here we go Randa Rabasaya Hey Shete Roto Three Go Look I, 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 Don't worry I'm gonna let you see this It's, it's about a minute Watch Watch this mad hat, Madness right, right now It's about to happen Bro, if you don't get out of my ear screaming, I know that Jamal Bryant, back of the head, got to be wet. But what, I mean, what, what is going on? You know, the Bible talks about, you no know, church being in order. Literally, this sermon is a, a big display of going against that. But I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you see it. I'm going to let you see it. Put a yelling emoji in the chat. Don't you let me go. Don't you let me go. You know, I feel sorry for Jamal Bryant and wants it because, man, he's always being taken to the ground. You remember that lady that tackled him? He even tackled. He done, he done took him to the ground and he, he, he got that man stunned. Glory. 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 Oh, he's my, my, he my, 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 out. My, 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 my. They got to move that speaker. Jamal is out. Look at this. He is passed out. But remember, 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 I said, hey, we're we going we gonna to get to that money, right? I got bread in my pocket. 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 Oh, we going to get to that money. Oh, don't worry. We got that cash anointing. It ain't, a, that ain't in the Bible, but we got that cash anointing at Jamal Bryant Church. Those of y'all that know that God has prepared you, I need the envelopes up here, please. I need bring, hundred of them in my hand. Brings my money. Hundred of them in my hand. Why am I getting them? Because you have to get it out of my hand. Because the same oil that is on me is going to be on you. <laughs> oh my it goodness. Is called, what kind of oil you got? I have what they call a cash anointing. What does it mean? I am 100% debt free. 
which means that you, the same oil on me will get on you. This to me, even your house can be paid off. Oh my God. Y'all goodness. don't believe God. No, 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 no. Alone. no, sir. We believe God. We don't believe you. See, this man is just, this is what a deceiver sounds like. Can be taken care of. Come on here. And there are a hundred of you like me. You're going to come up. And when you get the envelope out of my hand, you're going to repeat after me. I have a cash anointing. Start walking right now. Move. Get it out of my hand. I have a cash anointing. I have a cash anointing. I have a cash anointing. Here's a cash. Amen. A cash. There you go. There you go. Take it. It's going to happen. And your bills will be paid. And you will be 100 percent debt free. Now, remember, I said this sermon was four years ago. So I would love to see. I would love to see uh, where are they now offering version. You know, <laughs> I would love to see four years later, tithes and offering. Where are they now? Right. Because this man's been promising their house going to be paid, student loans, bills, all that. You know, um, how dare you? All that. But you, you know what? Last clip last clip some more some more money some more money right you got to get to that bread right there are a hundred of us and we are going to sow a seed of 53 dollars for every business owner every manager every supervisor every head of anything there are a hundred of us why am I doing this? Because yeah. we sow into our future. Said no Bible verse ever. Well, if you want a future, you got to sow into it. So if you want a good business, you got to tithe $53. I mean, why 53? Why not 1,063 with that? I mean, it's an arbitrary number. And whenever the anointing is high, we have to sow into it. You hear that? When the anointing's high, you have to sow into it to uh, realize it. My goodness, this is not Christian. This is mysticism. This is new age. This isn't Bible. My assignment is complete. New birth, you owe us a victory. <laughs> and after that, they have completely failed. My goodness. Yes, I absolutely abhor sermons like that because one, they're all about you. And then the end goal is to get you to give money. Again, I am not against giving. I think you should give, um, but that shouldn't be the end goal. I mean, you should grow in wisdom and knowledge in Christ. I, I like how my church does it. Our church uh, puts the money in the back. All the members know uh, where, the, where their giving box is. It's rarely mentioned from the pulpit. Everybody knows where to give. I mean, you can't miss the box, right? It doesn't need to be mentioned every service. People know to give. Guess what? If you're a Christian, you want to help out the church. You know how to be generous, right? <laughs> and so... Yeah, boy, John Hanna, he is a mess and, and a half. Till next time, grace and peace. Yo, grace and peace. Thank you for watching another episode of All Things Theology. If you enjoyed what you heard today, go on and give me a like. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. I promise to give you weekly lives, videos, interactions, exposing false teachers, sharing with you, the viewer, my theological beliefs, Things about the culture and the Bible. So if you're here for that, come on and join us. Also, if you would like to support this channel financially, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube member. Links are in the description below. You can see content before it drops. You can also have Q&A sessions with also other Patreon members, YouTube members as well. So if you would like that, hit the description link in below.